How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Look at you with the sure mic. I love it. Yeah, and and it's hiding the yo. I but, love it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh man. My wife thinks I look absolutely adorable in it. So let me tell you, like I was I'm shocked how many men buy the shirt. And then they all hit me up and go, I get so many compliments when I wear it. When I wear it out, everybody's like, oh my God, that's such a cute tee. So it actually, you know, a lot of men are like, oh, that's too wimpy for me. But it's actually like a lot of my friends wear it and they go, I get so many compliments from ladies on this shirt. <laughs> They're like, where'd you get it? <laughs> Dude, cool. it's so it's so true. That's what I and I try. This is on brand for me because I try to get things that detract from my face and other features <laughs> on my body. So yeah. if I could get something that draws some cuteness to me, that's all I need. There you go. There. All right, we can go ahead. I'm recording, but we can go ahead and crack. Let me another. let me ask you something before yeah. we start. When you record yours, are you listening to me through your computer? Because I always wear headsets and I've always been scared to go through the computer because I'm scared for the feedback. But these mics won't get that that sound from the computer or do you have headphones in oh yes sorry my long hair is oh, hiding okay the... okay got you got you yes yes your, your your great hair was covering them okay good deal uh, the only other cute thing i have on my body is besides the yo shirt <laughs> i love it i love but, it yeah i usually and i try to ask my guests if they have the earphones too because sometimes the mic will pick up the sound if it's speakers so yeah, yeah. i mean but you, you know what you're doing. You okay. do the, the morning yo every Every morning, every let's day. go. That's right. Yes, yes. All right, well, we can go ahead and crack this go episode for it. open if you'd go like. Go for it. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Advice Podcast, where we give you advice with a little bit of comedy sprinkled in. Everybody, my name is Stefan Satani, and I'm your host. Joining me today, very special guest. You may have heard him on the radio. You may have seen him on Fear Factor years ago. Oh, you may wow. have seen him on his special Blasian. Uh, everybody, please welcome Michael. Yo, snaps, snaps, snap, 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 snap. What's up, man? How are you? I am doing phenomenal. How are you, Michael? I, you know what? I, I'm happy to be alive. So it's all good. Any day, like my dad said, any day you wake up, it's a great day. So that's how I'm feeling, <laughs> man. That's how I'm feeling. Oh, man. That's, you know, that it's contagious because I'm feeling that way too. And I have dove into the universe with Michael Ooh. Yo. The then, universe. Then I have yes, the universe, and I ha I haven't been able to attend one of your morning yo's live, mm -hmm. but I've been listening to all the episodes. You've got some great guests on there, and you've got some great solo episodes, and you have just such a a loving vibe, a loving community, and um, I think it's fantastic. And I also wanted to compliment you on your intro, which <laughs> is out of all the podcast and i've listened to maybe hundreds of podcasts that is the best intro i have ever heard and oh then, wow okay yeah and then i watched on facebook and i was like oh my god he's got a, a adorable little intro video too yeah it's him. it's so. animated there's this guy that's a big comedy fan name uh on instagram he's like sloppy bones something or sloppy bunny or something like that but he's a great <laughs> guy and i actually met him he lives in japan oh. And he comes down nice. here to go when, you know, to go check out comedy. And then he goes back, meets a bunch of comedians. Then he does some animations for him. And he just did that absolutely for free. My friend uh, did the music for it. And uh, yeah, I, I love the way it came out because my show, The Morning Yo, it's, it's all about just talking about serious stuff at times, but having fun sometimes, but mainly being positive in the morning to kick people's day off. So. Oh, man. And it's just like, it's almost a substitute for a nice cup of coffee because I feel it is. invigorated, ready to go. But, yeah, we're building, um, we're, we're building a new studio for it. So I'm just in this little shoe box right now, but we're going to build a studio. And, you know, I got all this other equipment I can't use. I got the roadcaster that I'm excited to hook up to the podcast so I can have sound effects. Because when people, I want people to actually, you know, with, with the with the streaming tool I use, people can actually jump on the podcast and I can put them on like this. So I want to have a yeah. sound effect where it's like, welcome to my, and then I'll pour them a cup of yo, you know, just, just little fun stuff like that. So I, that I, I just, I can't wait till the studio's done. So. Oh, that's really cool. I love seeing studios in progress. As you can see, yeah. I can't afford enough sound panels to cover my <laughs> wall, but uh, I, I'm getting there. So slowly, slowly, but surely. But also speaking of getting there and slowly, but surely, 
you have been working on some new material and you've got a new special that you're working on. And I yes. was fortunate enough to be able yes. to witness at Stand Up Live in Phoenix with you and Eric Griffin. You went on and I can't remember if you announced that you were working on material or whatever, but I, I think we all had the idea that both you and Eric were both working on material and we're, I was expecting, okay, there's gonna be a little bit of stumbling and blah, 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 but you guys were both phenomenal. It was it, incredible, dude. It was, you know, what's interesting is I think comedians get to a point where we still do jokes that don't work, you know, but right, I think it's right. more of confidence trying the jokes. And I've, I, I've gotten to a point where before I bring something on stage, I kind of know it works because if it works on me and I'm a tough critic, I feel like mm -hmm. it's going to work on other people. You know, and the only time it doesn't work is when I haven't really, when it's a lazy idea that I kind of just mm -hmm. think about on the way to the club and try it. Now, some of those have worked, but when it's not well thought out, that's when it usually doesn't work. Because how I do it is I always, before I introduce anything on stage, I have three punches to it or three, like if it's a story about my life, it's three heightened moments. So if I do the first heightened moment and they, take it, I go to the second. And if they don't take that one, I stop and say, okay, I know the first one works. Next time I do this, I'll do the third one. And then I keep building from that. So as long as I get the first one, I get the, then I'll go to the second. Sometimes you get the second and then you get to do the third. And maybe the third works, maybe it doesn't, but then you can replace that one. So it's kind of like, okay, first one worked, second one didn't work. Uh, next time I'll do the third one second and see if that works. You see what I mean? And I yes, surround exactly. it with good stuff. I know that works too. So I can always get out. Yeah. Of it. That, that's to It reminds me of, you know, trying to get to third base with my wife. I try something, there you go. a kiss, little kiss, little smooch. If that works, I try to go a little farther. Just keep on uh, if feeling the good vibes. I keep going. So yeah, but most of the time the wives go, ugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah i'm think not I in the mood right now with comedy yeah right? i want to watch the bachelor right now so i'm like oh, oh my god is your wife a bachelor fan she is yes oh my wife too she forces me to watch that show it's unbelievable <laughs> how women find that show romantic isn't it like one dude <laughs> can hook up with 26 chicks and women are like oh my god it's so romantic <laughs> i'm like what are you talking about like that, and then one woman sleeping with 26 dudes, like they don't sleep with all of them, but they could, they could. Right. So it's kind of like, <laughs> why would you want to watch your whole dating, your, the person you're with whole dating profile. And he's gone through, he's the, I, I, all I think about is how dirty these people mouths are. Like the person that's kissing everybody. It's just a dirty mouth. Like they, they probably got all <laughs> kinds of diseases in their mouth. Like I, I ugh. and then you got to watch it back. After you're like, she's the one or he's the one, then you got to watch and make out with everybody. It's like ridiculous. It, yeah, it get, I feel like I get herpes just watching him Absolutely. making out with somebody. I'm like, I watch it, I'm just like, my mouth is like, Ugh. Do shots of Listerine each time. Right. It's just, oh, <laughs> that show God. should be sponsored by Listerine. It really should. <laughs> like that should be the main sponsor of that show. <laughs> oh my god that is genius maybe you know maybe women like it so much they're able to veil all of the overt sexuality with roses they're just like you know what we'll put a rose ceremony in there and a little bit of opera music maybe get Hans zimmer i don't know but yeah and it's just it, it makes it romantic that's but it's that's amazing that of. women wrap their head around that as romantic you know like like say you're you're say there was yeah. all women running ABC, right? And me and you mm -hmm. go in there and say, yo, we got a show, check this out. One dude gets to hook up with 26 chicks and doesn't have to marry one at the end. What do y'all think? The women be calling us misogynists, <laughs> uh, your pigs for even bringing that in. But yet women love this freaking show. And I get it if you yeah. like it because it's entertaining, but some women get so serious about it. It's like, come on, man. You know, it's yeah. like, I. Uh, it's almost like you want your man to cheat on you because you find that romantic, you know? It's like, oh, well, <laughs> this dude's sleeping with everybody and I think it's romantic. So the dude's like, okay, okay I, I guess I know what romantic is. Then. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, it's just such a phenomenon because Bachelor Nation has just grown exponentially, I feel. And so there are different, I feel, there are different layers of fans because now there are folks that have been following it a long time and they get married and their significant other gets dragged in. So then Bachelor Nation, they're like, okay, we got to tailor to this. So I think they they purposefully add some cheesy stuff. I remember last season, Chris Harrison was like, it's the most dramatic season ever, but this time every season is like ironically. That. Yeah. And so I don't know. It was just, it's fascinating, but yeah. So uh, anyway. we, 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 yeah. So I'm in the bachelor zone too with my wife. So I think it's ridiculous. And I get disgusted when I watch. It's so disrespectful to whip, but whatever, whatever. We'll move on. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. I can't wrap my head around why they like it, but okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, anyway, to choose another petal of this beautiful rose of an interview that we're having, mm -hmm. I was going to say that, and on top of the fact that you're saying that you go up different levels and as you see and test the temperature of the crowd, if they're hot for it, keep going. I was also gonna say, I feel like you do a really good job of just continual experimentation, even on existing bits where I remember watching your fantastic special Blazing, there you go. where mm -hmm. you, you were talking about uh, getting older and your knee gave out on you. And then I remember hearing on or watching the, uh, AGT or the America's Got Talent audition, which fascinating that there's no crowd and you no crowd. It's just them. Huge props to you for that. And uh, and and you added in another tagline where you're like, "My knee gave out like Beyonce," and I was like, "Oh, fresh, beautiful, hilarious." So well, I mean, you know, it's kind of like uh, you know, since I'm working on a new special, you're trying to get rid of the old stuff. But right. what I noticed, but AGT wanted the old stuff. Like AGT was like, we don't want your new material because then we, you know, you can't use it for a year as far as like television. Yeah. So we'll just go through your old special and basically tell you like what, what we want from it. So I was like, all right, cool. And so uh, I was just spur of the moment. I was like, oh, it's like Beyonce. So it, it just happened. And, uh, but they kind of, you know, that show, they kind of, if they say do this, they kind of want it exactly. They don't want any surprises. You know, they uh -huh. kind of want it uh -huh. exactly like you did it so they can, so they know exactly. Because they got camera. Gotcha. I mean, it's a big production. Like, you rehearse it like five times. They have different camera angles for different moves you do. So, literally, it's a dance, man. Once you're up there, you got to uh -huh. kind of hit your mark. So, it's no like, oh, here's a new topic I'm going to just do out of nowhere. No. It's not like that there. You, you, they got it down to the time, exact time when you need to be done too. You know, it's a well-oiled machine and they're great over there, but it's, it's not like, oh, I'm gonna walk up here and just kind of throw these out here and see what happens. It's not like that at all. Yeah. And that's, it's so interesting too, because just tying back to your whole, and it was a very emotional audition yeah. and, and I saw the streams uh, of tears and it started to get swell up in my tear ducts. Maybe it was allergies. I'm not sure. Yeah. But I, I feel like it's so beautiful to see one, you have such a supportive wife that you were interviewing at E Insider and you've interviewed some of the biggest celebrities out there, including the whole panel of judges. Yeah. For it was crazy. I, I, I've interviewed all of them, all of them. Yeah. And it was really powerful what you were saying as you were getting, as your voiceover was there and you were like, you know, I've interviewed these people and the celebrities that I've interviewed, they are living life at 100%. And I want to get to that level. And so it, even though it was a little later in the game, you got into comedy and bam, I mean, if I heard correctly, Joe Coy, as you were on um, the Chelsea Lately show, he was like, you know, you're really funny. You should get into stand up. Yeah. And we're like, well, maybe I should. Yeah, oh. Joe was like, <laughs> Joe was there from the beginning because he goes, yeah. you starting stand up, you're way ahead because you have so much to talk about. You're black and Asian. Your family's funny. You know, he says, start with that because uh -huh. most people it takes them, you know, till they got their legs under them before they start talking about family. You should start right away because that's all I would talk about. I would tell him we would compare moms. We compare you know, how we grew up. And he goes, dude, these stories are funny. Take it to the stage. And literally he took me under my wing. I mean, took me under his wing for the first two, three years. And man, that change, it's just, he's such at a different level. 
when you're around mm -hmm. that, you get better. I, I, I compare it to this. It's like if you play in a district where you're the best player, you need to find another district because you need to play with people that are great. So you can see I'm not as good as I think I am. And around Joe, I never thought that because he's light years ahead of me. You know what I mean? So you always yeah. need to surround yourself with those comics. Plus, being on Chelsea, I was around some amazing comics all the time. So once I got into it, at first, I don't want to say it was hate. It was kind of joking at me. like, Argh. But then they saw, oh, this guy's taking it seriously. And then it just became a supportive type of environment where you just see people work. You see their work ethic. And you want to bring that to the stage. I remember Chelsea said, don't be that comic that's just on TV and goes up there and bombs. Really do the work. Mm -hmm. Go up. Make sure people see you go up. And make sure they know you're serious. If not, you'll just be a joke. And I never do anything half-assed. You know, so I went in 100%. Joe took me under his wing. And uh, now he, I, I'm kind of like going on my own and uh, still talk to those people. Still, like, sometimes I'll right. go out with them. But I'm to a place right now where I want to kind of, you know, now I've been doing it 10 years. This is my 10 year of doing it. And now I'm like, OK, now it's my time to kind of turn the page and and work on this new special. Because you saw my first special, the second the second um, special is going to be a lot different just because you saw the Corona right. joke. You saw all the, It gets yeah. a lot deeper. And I tell everybody my first special is great. But to me now, growing in comedy. It's like a Taylor Swift song. It's very, it's fun. It's poppy. It's very digestible. Uh, and right. you leave happy. You know, there's no drama. There's no anything that goes wrong in my life in the first right. one, because that's where I was at. The second one, it gets a little deeper, you know, and when I can do a Corona joke about almost dying, and I've only been doing it a month, and it's already hitting in five, six months from now, oh, I can't wait to see what it becomes because it already works, you know? And that's what excites me, these new bits I have that, and I'm discovering new stuff every day in them. That's what makes me excited for this new special is it's gonna, uh, hopefully I'll shoot in November, but the stuff you saw, it's already working. So yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a lot better in six months. Like the jokes I do for my special are, are it could be the same joke, but it's told differently now. You just grow. You just keep growing. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really, it really says something about your talent as well. Because as you had said, you started out, we talked about family and Blasian. It was all light, Taylor, Taylor Swift-ish. Oh, yeah. And, it's, very, um, it's a pop song, you know? Right, yeah, which very good. And then now you're evolving even further by talking about something. And I... I heard you talking about it on Morning Yo, saw you post about it the other day where it was your year anniversary, yeah. and then saw you on stage talking about it. Like, it is, it, it was probably one of the worst moments of your life. And the going worst. through all these things of like, what, what will happen if I die with my kids and everything, and being able to just ring that and get all of the comedy juices into your, your bit is phenomenal, I think. It's, and you I, know, I think it's challenging. It's pretty amazing, though it, it's, it feels so good to be on stage telling people something that was so painful to you, but right. you still find the comedy in it. And just think about it. I'm literally, like, let's, let's make it black and white. I'm telling a story to people about almost dying where they're invested with their heart, but I'm also making them laugh at the same time. And to me, that's... That's where I want to be in comedy, where they feel it. But then they're like, oh, my God, this is hilarious. And when you look about it, he's talking about dying. Like when people walk away from that show, they go, oh, my God, I, he almost died from COVID. And I laughed the whole time. <laughs> you, you know, that's to me, that's amazing. And that's what I love about <laughs> that's what I love about comedy. You know, and I think that's, you know, I, I, I tell people people that see the bit like comedians that saw my first special or know my first material they'll see me do that bit on stage and they go oh the transition is happening like you've grown mm -hmm. it's it's a, it's just a different level of joke the first special is great right. but it's just a different level it's deeper right. it's broken down more you know uh like I, I won't go into it but i have a joke i don't know if i did it on your show but about the fountain joke 
about my dad and fountains and me and fountains. I don't know. I, I didn't do it every show. But, I don't remember that one. Yeah. But to me, like, it's it's the closest joke that I'll ever probably get to Dave Chappelle. Like, it's like comedians stop me all the time and go, yo, that's a brilliant joke. Because you don't see it coming. You don't see it coming. So I'm excited that, like, comics are going, yo, that's okay. You're You're starting to, it's turning now. It's turning where this is, your first stuff was great and fun, uh, but this is deeper and you're hitting a lot of things that you, you, you couldn't talk about your first one because first of all, I didn't know how to talk about it. And, and my life wasn't at that point. Literally, my life was very happy until this happened. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like I was on Joe Rogan's podcast and he goes, you know, I look at your life and I, your parents are still together. He goes, where do you pull your comedy from? I go, it's very happy comedy because <laughs> I'm not going to fake anything, you know? Like, my wife is great. Right. We've argued twice right. in five years. <laughs> you know, like, like we don't argue. You know, it's kind of like everything is perfect, but then you almost die, and then you start realizing, yeah. whoa, okay. You know, and yeah. all the complications that come from after that. So the bit you saw was six minutes already. By the time I'm done, it'll probably be 10-minute bit. Cause there's so wow. much more that happened that I did. So how I did that bit, I just found the funny moments, put them all together. Mm -hmm. It came out to six minutes. Now I can even throw some more heart in it and what in stuff that really happened because I know the punch is coming, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it gives you more freedom yeah. to yeah. play because yeah. for six minutes, people are laughing. I got, I got it. Now I can even expand the story where I can talk about, like, you didn't hear what happened in the ambulance. Like how the guy was like, mm -hmm. hey, uh, you're that, like I'm gasping for air. And the guy's like, hey, uh, Joe Rogan podcast? I'm like, yeah. He, and, I'm, and, I'm like, <laughs> and he goes, he literally he goes, Michael. And I go, no, no, no. Like I'm gasping. <laughs> so it's little things like that now that I can bring in that really happened in this yeah. story. And it came to a point where this dude, I was gasping for air, but I was also worried. He started looking at my stand-up clips, and I was more worried about me being funny to him than actually gasping for air. So I'm like looking at him, go, oh, oh, oh. and he got, and he started <laughs> chuckling. And I was like, yeah, yeah. you know. So it was just that funny moment, you know, like real stuff <laughs> that really happened. Because comics, you know, anytime people watch our stuff, we want it to be funny. And I'm guessing right. for air. And that's all I'm caring about for that moment. If I'm funny to this dude. And uh, it was just a very, and it's just very weird that when I'm guessing for air, the ambulance dude would look up a stand up clip of me while I'm guessing for air in the ambulance. But it, it, it's just a lot of little stuff like that happened. You know what I mean? And some of it was yeah. unbelievable. Like, I don't want to get, but there's so much stuff that I have yeah. to add. And I know the six minute chunk already works. So now mm -hmm. it's like pulling people in even more, adding stuff, you know? Yeah. You know, so I'm excited about that. That's really cool. And before we start to answer some questions, I was just going to yeah. say one last thing is I feel like people, uh, it just talking and communicating with each other on a daily basis, when something bad happens or there's something traumatic, sometimes you hear, oh yeah, he doesn't like to talk about that. And some people just don't like to talk about these yeah. things. So to be yeah. able to have the courage to not only talk about it, but to also exam like put a magnifying glass over all the events of that and be like, okay, what here is funny? And and be able to bring that to an audience where it's like, we're on the edge of our seats wondering, I mean, obviously we know you're okay, but yeah. like wondering what's gonna happen, but then also cracking up at these just surprises that slap us in the face. It's it's really brilliant. Like so. I'm so, I'm so proud of that story. I can't even call it yeah. a joke. It's just a real story that had a lot yeah. of funny things happen into it. And yeah. that's the biggest advice I got from Joe Coy. He was like, for us, for the type of comedians we are, he goes, mm -hmm. we're storytellers, bro. He says, never sit down to write a joke. He says, for us, that doesn't work. You sit down and go over a real story and find the funny in that story. Start from a real place. Like, because mm. I never forgot that. Start with a real place, something you really know, because when you find the funny in that, it's organic. Then no one can say you stole it because it's about your life. You yeah. know, like, yeah. like it's, it's so real to you 
it's easier to find the funny. Like I'm, I respect the comedians that are those one-liner comedians that pop out like a hundred jokes in 10 minutes. I could never do that. Like my mind doesn't work like that. Like big yeah. props to them. You know, some people love that style of comedy and I, and you know, it, it's so amazing <laughs> to me how people can write like that. My brain just doesn't work like that. My brain is like, yeah. here's a story. Every 20 seconds, let me find something funny in it that really mm -hmm. happened. You know, so that's mm -hmm. my goal is like every 20 seconds, unless like I, I, I took a note from Dave Chappelle, you know, unless it's so interesting because Dave Chappelle's thing is uh, I heard him say, you want them to laugh, but you also want them to be interested. So if you're making a great point, you don't need a laugh because that's just as strong as a laugh. You know, like when I, uh, you know, in the bit where I talked about uh, never seeing my kids again, you know, that was a part of it that wasn't funny, but emotionally people connected to that. And that was just right. as strong as a laugh. So that's, right. that's, that's kind of where I am is Dave Chappelle's in my head. Like if they're leaning in listening intently, that's just as good as a laugh because they're learning and they're listening to what you're yeah. saying, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I take that where I'm very comfortable on stage where I know when I go on, I could be funny, but also I'm growing in the place where I could also be very engaging and interesting where I don't need a laugh and I'm comfortable in yeah. the silence. And that's the biggest growth I've had so far. God, how beautiful stepping into the universe. It's universe. I love it. <laughs> Yo, <-ville>. uh, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to stop and answer some questions and sure. then um, say goodbye to each other or until next time. However yes, absolutely. Fine. This is great. Um, but first, yes, before we get into the questions, I like to get us inspired with an inspirational quote. So I've got yes. one packed in and ready to go. But before I shoot mine out, I want, I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that they cling to in their dark days or that motivates them when they're having trouble. I, I have it on my email and I never heard someone say it. So I might have made this up. I, I don't know. But it, it goes, um, oh, I, I got to read. All, I, I, it says, um, God, I made it up and then I forgot it. Hold on one second. Because I send it out all the time. I people. remember it. It was like, don't, oh, don't live. just live, make a difference. And that's yes. my thing is uh, really like we're all in after the Corona story, it's even more true. Like we're not here for a long time. So, uh, you know, don't just live, try to make a difference in my difference, and here's the thing, don't compare your difference you're making to somebody else's. Like a lot of people, they'll march to show they're making a difference. Right, I'm not a big right. marcher. You know what I mean? I don't feel comfortable right. being in that environment for myself because I don't like crowds right. of people, but unless right. they're watching me, you know, like I'll go in a club and do it, but that's a job. I just, you will never see me in a crowded area. You know what I mean? That's, mm -hmm. uh, it just freaks me out. So, but uh, I make a difference, I feel, in comedy. And then I speak at different schools at times. So I make a difference in a, in a different way. But don't try to compare. Because people try to do this. They say, well, what are you doing to make a difference? This is not a competition. You make right. your difference, right. I'll make my difference. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, exactly. That's beautiful. Well, I'm, I'm almost all the way fully erectly Sti uh, stimulated no inspired. Whoa, okay Whoa, okay yeah, too much information here yeah too Michael's much like, come on man come on <laughs> so i just to get me to the tippy top i've got an inspirational quote it's not by a person whatsoever okay. it's actually by a robot and it's called inspirobot so it uses ai to take some of the wisest words known to man just mash them together for a beautiful quote oh so, i gotta hear this i'll read this one you can tell me what it means to you michael it says okay <clears throat> if you are the hottest woman in the rock concert you are not seeing the potential of the rock concert. Woo. If you're the hottest woman at a rock concert, you're not seeing the potential of the rock concert. You know, it might be similar to like you were talking about with Joe, where it's like, you know, he, right now you don't want to be the prettiest woman at the rock concert because you're special and your comedy won't grow as much. And so that it's potential true. is gone. So you want to be an, maybe not ugly girl. Well, at the no, rock no, no, no. Well, but... here's what it's to me. It's saying that, well, if she's the prettiest one there, she has no one to look up to. 
because ah, women okay. love competition just like dudes we love competition so she's like well i'm the hottest one here i i run this all the guys it's no challenge you know yeah. like i don't care what people yeah. say everyone loves a challenge you know and and maybe that's what it is is she's not seeing any potential because there is no potential because she's the hottest person there but if there was 15 of her there then it's like okay how do i stand out even more how do i push myself to do be different and that's how The Bachelor was created. Yes, 100%. 100%. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Beautiful. Now that we're inspired, yes. I, I think we have time for one question. And oh, we'll you can do a couple. Too. You can do a couple if you got them. Okay. Okay, so I've got two. This okay. first one, it's, it's uh, found by our fan Ricardo, found on Reddit. It says, I pissed myself while sober at a friend's party. How to proceed? I had a few drinks at a friend's party, but fairly sober. I asked my friend if I can use his restroom. Unfortunately, it is occupied. His drunk ass tours me around the building for 10 minutes while I inquire, inquire about a restroom in his building until I'm forced to wee wee in his garage due to my bladder reaching its limit. I am humiliated. What can I do? Has well, you this ever happened the party. to you, Michael? No, <laughs> not, never, never. Like you gotta leave the party. You can't walk around with stank <laughs> pants, man, you, with yellow pants and people knowing you peed on yourself. It, it'll live, I mean, especially now with social media. Oh man, people yeah. post that everywhere. You'll never live that down. 80 years oh, from now, if you're still alive, people are like, you remember when you piss your pants at that party? I got a picture, <laughs> hang on. Like, bring that picture of such and such at this party. Like it, <laughs> now things last forever. You gotta leave, you gotta hit a jack. You gotta just get out you of gotta, there. You gotta, you know, I was going to say own it. Just be the piss pants guy no, because people are, no. it's, it's leaving an indelible mark on your reputation. So I think, no, you're thinking no. No, no, leave. <laughs> leave. That's what I'm telling you. Leave. That's so. why you always need a spare change of pants, just in case. <laughs> I feel, I know, no. I know, Craig. No, just I, leave. Just leave. If you're pissing on, if you're, if you're pissing on yourself, just like, and here's the thing. He could go outside and piss somewhere. Like, wh wh why does he have to do it in a bathroom? It's so ridiculous. Like, that's the dumbest right. story ever. My son, when we travel, if there's not a bathroom around, he'll he's four. He'll go, I'll pee outside. Like, if my <laughs> son at four years old will do that, a grown man should know to piss outside in the bushes. Come on now. He deserves I can just it. imagine your son being like, I got this, Dad. Let me go pee. Yeah, he's, he did. He literally like, I got it. <laughs> outside and i was like all right shoot, you go ahead damn that's wonderful all right well good so just leave and never show your face in public again i think this person is answering well so. he can show his face but you don't have to announce to the world that you pitch your pants you know you don't mm. have to be like hey guys i'm leaving yeah. to piss my pants just <laughs> <do that thing. laughs> oh just I, see i was assuming people knew already see i'm assuming he's saying he couldn't find anywhere to pee so people okay. didn't know yet. That's a, that's okay. how I took it, you know. Okay, I'm so he was looking for a bathroom then. and he pissed in his pants. And now you're asking me what he should do. Uh, don't ask for another pair of pants. Just leave. Like I disappear yeah. from parties all the. I'm a ghost. I'll do the one walk around. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? <sighs> Vanish, and that's the way I like it. That's beautiful. Yeah, and you know what? In that case, if nobody's seen it, I would say run as well because right? you don't want that. Yes. You don't want people calling I, you piss pants, you know? You don't want yes. I don't want to be piss pants, Michael, for the rest of my oh, life. God. Yeah, I don't want to be piss pants Satani anymore. So Yeah, um, that's a terrible nickname. Piss pants. Horrible. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Well, we've got our last question. This yeah. one is found by Sarah from reddit says my girlfriend of three years wakes me up early in the morning because she wants to spend more time with me oh yeah. i know it sounds cute but she keeps trying to wake me up by pulling my skin sometimes showing me memes and tiktoks and kissing me pretty aggressively etc i am in med school and when she wakes me up i cannot study at night can you please help me Whew. so my, by the way michael i know you have two kids a wife yep your comedy mm -hmm. career how many hours do, do you get a night of sleep oh I, I i got headphones like i sleep my wife doesn't get much sleep i'm not gonna lie to you but i we've decided that you know especially when things get back to normal at, at the right. time we both are not sleeping with the kids but um 
you, my wife just can't take sleep training our kids. So we kind of, they're in the room with us. Uh, so I put the headphones in and I get some sleep and if she needs help, she wakes me up. So yeah, I don't get any sleep either. So, but I'm married I, and I'm not going to get out of this. Like, but this other girl, you'd be like, yo, uh, I got a big test tomorrow. You're not sleeping over. Unless they're living, are they living together or see, that's where, are they living together? Are they not living together? Are they, you know, mm, I don't know. Or you're sleeping details. in another room or I'm sleeping in another room. I'll sleep on the couch, you know? So it's yeah. a thing where, and, but they're aggressive kissing in the morning. All, they both got stank breath. Who wants that? Who wants oh, stank yeah. breath in the morning? Man. You ever yeah, smell that, each other's breath? You need breath like, by the side. Yeah. You ever smell each other's breath in the morning? You're like, God damn, what died in you? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like... <laughs> You don't want that. Unfortunately, you don't want yes. That. Yeah, you don't oh. want in your breath is like Mwah. when you can smell your own breath and taste it. It's time to brush your teeth. Oh, you don't yes. need to be and kissing me then. back. Yeah, uh, exactly, exactly. Morning breath. It's it's strange to me how you eat nothing, you just sleep, and then your mouth is just like you know what, bacteria. Let's get to work up in yeah, here, yeah. and then your mouth is like I'm gonna take a shit, a long one, all night long <laughs> in your mouth. It's pretty amazing. Beautiful. It's like I said in my spe- it's pretty amazing how you can sleep all night long, not move in your sore. Like, w- what's up with that? Like, you didn't do anything to be sore. You're just sleeping. You know what I mean? That's yeah, that's true. You're it looks like your body kicks. The, somebody kicks the shit out of you. And then yeah, somebody, somebody beats you up. Raise a skunk right in your mouth. In your too. mouth. hundred percent. hundred percent. Pepe Le Pew is like pew, 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 right in the mouth. It's <laughs> oh, he's canceled crazy. now. <laughs> oh yeah that's right that's right god he's oh, too wow. aggressive with the other squirrels or whatever he's too aggressive <laughs> you know <laughs> beautiful well what a way to end the podcast we've come to the end michael thank you so much for joining you got it buddy i wanted to ask what have you got going on what would you like to plug where can people follow you uh well i'm gonna be in st louis this weekend at the funny bone i got five shows there the next weekend, which is April 1st through 3rd, and it's not an April Fool's joke, I will be in Houston, Texas, my hometown, nice. doing five shows. So I'm very excited about that. And other dates are about to drop because things are opening up. So I'm excited and, you know, working on the new stuff. And I'm just excited. Oh, man. We, as am I. And for all you fans and listeners that are excited, the links are going to be in the show notes. So if you're nice. in those areas, you can just click and go. Just go. Okay. Be safe, but go. Um, all right. Well, thank you very much, Michael. It was a pleasure to see you again and have you on and, um, we'll talk soon. All right. Have a great one, bro. All right. Thanks. You too. Later. Bye.